Okay, hello there. Is a here? Ah, well. Let's go. Let's let's talk about this whole thing here. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let I I'll, I'll just have to say this once. Like, I I don't really think anybody can have a decisive um takedown on both sides. I don't really think anybody should you know stand in one position yet, because. You know, looking at whatever that exists currently at the moment, the chat logs in Discords and the different group that uh, they actually got those chat logs from, and um, the, the the reason behind why this person got banned, everything is just very strange. But at the same time, I think. Everybody has a wrong notion of what is going on behind the scenes. It seems like if you look at the surface, you probably just realize that Cyberbull got banned unjustly. But I think it's most likely a part of the TOS again at action. And because of that, a whole thing, that small little segment that is available in his second video, that might has triggered the TOS and caused the permanent ban. But of course, you know, that is just my prediction. It's not my, I'm not going to say this is 100% the end all and be all. This is just my thing, according to my research about what is going on there. Now I know, you know, as a content creator, you probably might be thinking, but hey, you are actually, you know, supporting of NGS because you are an official content creator, right? Um, I mean, yeah, but still, you gotta have a very, very, you know, open mind in terms of, like, every scenario that is actually going to, you know, result in, like, uh, I don't know, hurting in, hurting the game. Like, of course, I'm going to, like, try to get into this as well, but I cannot guarantee any closure on this whole drama incident. Now, here is just what I'm going to say from this drama okay number one the side of where people who thinks cyberbook got bad unjustly is probably slightly justified however i don't really think you know going out and like attacking the games staff or the, the game itself is going to help anything in terms of this case because there were cases of permanent bans that's going on previously for other players as well. It's not just, you know, Cyberpunk. No, there has been like a lot of this similar kind of an incident happened in the past. Now, most people might say, hey, if you, if they actually manage to get a permanent ban, that means they have done something very bad and that's it. They believe in Sega's judgment and then that's it, right? Well, technically, that might be true as well, but I am not going to like say this is the truth of all of it. Now, the reason why I'm even covering this at all is not because I'm standing on either side. It's because I am just thinking that there is a little bit of like a weird gaslighting moment in like, I don't know, each side. And not to mention the whole other side of the people who you know the cyberbook community is targeting by the way they are like literally chilling and laughing at the whole drama situation by the way now i don't really want to be like a person who wanted to side with either side but i think it's kind of unfair for people to actually just put the judgment by just watching the whole you know cyberbook's uh messaging i guess so unfortunately, some people are like, you know, if you haven't ch checked what other people are actually talking about in the other Discord group, I guess you are probably going to be clueless, but I've checked the chat logs and it's uh, nothing much really. The allegations of data mining is already long gone because they removed the whole data mine related stuff after the TOS of data mining it became like, uh illegal and being enforced so uh, i don't really think that whole argument is going to valid anymore 
Uh, but you know what? I, I don't really want to delve even more deeper into this whole drama situation. I just hope that Sega can handle this situation um, way better than like what it is currently handled as. Now, do I think actually Cyberbolt variants a permanent ban just because he stated some very bad things or has targeted someone in the, one of his like videos on his YouTube channel? Not really. And uh, do you, do I really think that Cyberbo deserves a ban on all community channels just because he's, you know, undisliked or something? Not really. Do I think everybody has a second chance in terms of like appealing against a ban that was unjustly provided? Or maybe allowed a person who got permanently banned to try to appeal for their own cases with their own evidences? Yes, so you know this. I think the the whole thing, unfortunately, is because Sega just enforces the permanent ban and just drop it on literally any player they deserve that somehow deserves it. Like I don't know if the player is toxic. Maybe there is like a first warning and a second warning system. It would probably be better, but at the same time, you know, they are probably a. They, they wanted to drop like a very, very heavy punishment for toxicity, so I don't know about that. But at the same time, do you think Cyberbolt is toxic? I, to be honest, not really. After watching his first video and then seeing his reply on the second, it does not look like for the rest of the second video is actually like, you know, hating the game or anything. It's just more like, constructive criticism i guess but apparently some people just take it like a doomer message or something ah uh, I, I i don't really want it whatever so the conclusion is yeah sega needs to reveal their banning system and maybe not create more drama by accidentally banning another large content creator in the future maybe and uh hopefully they don't you know ban our official content creators just because they accidentally said something as well because i think that is actually kind of bad in terms of like their game image or something you know there is already like a lot of huge banning dramas as going on like in other live service games like in the runescape case that currently asmongold is covering and also the same thing goes with destiny 2 speedrunners being permanently banned just because they what they speed run the game legally um so yeah i think this kind of like a permanent ban kind of situation is by the game's um, authority anyway so i i can't have anything to say here i don't really think my words is going to be taken seriously anyways but the reason why i wanted to make this video is so that i wanted to say that you know People deserve second chances. Cyberbolt, I don't know, man. He's, uh, he's, no matter what you wanted to say of him, I still think he is like a content creator who have a decent amount of, a lot of like, um, amounts of numbers of subscribers that might cons reconsider to play the game if he's actually being resolved of his case or something. I mean, if, if Sega didn't actually ban Cyberbolt out of nowhere and given him like a permanent ban, I think he might actually make an even more positive video for his third uh, sequel of the whole is NGS a disaster video again. But since you guys pulled the trigger, uh, that's all to you then, Sega. Ah, oh, man, why do I have to cover this thing? The, the global community or the Doomer community on the other hand, always thought like the game is like in a very dire strait of like being needing a whole new remake or a realm reborn moment or something in terms of like the content and stuff like that I, unfortunately that is not true if you want to talk about like how the game is current state is to be honest the state of the current the game's current population is way better than a lot of life services the game's current situation is actually 
way better than a lot of like live services. Now, not the top dogs, mind you, of course. Like the top dogs are definitely going to have even higher numbers. But that's not the point here. The point is, this game has multiple platforms and, you know, different console platforms even. And you can just cross-play. So I don't really know the real number of the players behind it, but you can probably calculate from what they have stated in the whole interview segment if you really wanted to know the amount of players who actually stayed. This, it was said it was like 30% or something from the whole number of the player base, which is actually a pretty decent amount of chunk of number of players as well who are staying for the game. Because, you know, 70% is the players who are probably left or not playing the game anymore. But 30% is still not really a small number to scoff at, to be honest. And this kind of amount of players is literally similar to most MMOs or live services as well. So there's nothing new there. However, the game is not going to go anywhere unless most of the players suddenly just stop playing because of a certain protest method or if they didn't even do their AC scratches at all. But uh, I don't really think the Japanese players are stopping anytime soon, especially, you know, the whole sunk cost fallacy. They already have obtained so much fashion items at this point. I don't really think those players are going to leave really anytime soon. Even if they were to leave and stop playing the game for maybe like a, a moment, they would you know, sometimes just come back just to play the social aspect of the game. So, this is also another point of why this game is not dying is also, well, the game has very good, excellent, <clears throat> actually unbeatable fashion stuff, you know, in the game. I, I, I guess it's probably one of the best customization game there is, especially in terms of like, Oh, you want to create your OC here? Oh, you want to cosplay anything? Sure. It's even more flexible than in the in the aspect of like VR chat requires you to create the assets yourself, but but then you cannot really actually customize the asset unless you know about modeling. But in New Genesis, since you can just adjust every accessory available there is, so it's it's literally much easier than like like even VR chat. However, I had to say that because of the inclusion of the creative space as well, people are also enjoying that part of the game as well. Now, if you look at the whole system, it is not really that much complexity there is, except for maybe like the, the ways that you can actually create a mini game out of those uh, triggering systems or those small little cubes. But other than that, it's actually pretty still a pretty decent space for people to actually like you know flaunt their creativity and everything and so on and that resulted in a lot of like creative spaces being premiered or featured and stuff like like that and so on so it's not looking that bad for the game at the moment now the player base numbers didn't even drop at all when they are like competitive competitor games releasing for example back then maybe you guys are dooming because Oh, Tower of Fantasy is releasing. Oh, New Genesis is going to die. And then it happens and uh, everybody quits playing Tower of Fantasy somehow. I I, I guess it's because the, it's a pay to win gacha. That's why it's, it's not really exactly comparable to New Genesis. And then after that, you know, other games like, uh, I don't know, other MMORPGs has been releasing. And then the, the player base numbers will sometimes drop, but not... But then the next day, they usually just rise back up after they complete that other game, you know. It's, I, it, it, so far, the trend is basically, like, just going up. It just, it just keeps going up instead of, like, going down. And that is just the Steam charts, by the way. It's not, it's not like I'm talking about the whole overall population, because I, I, I can't, cannot gauge according to just using a Steam chart, by the way. So, this is just unfair. It, it seems like if the game is really dying, it would probably be have like less than 100 players or, or maybe close to that kind of amount in comparison to the previous numbers that they have. But so far, this is not the, the, the kind of level of like 
player drops that is very very constant or drastic like the failing live service games that i've seen but apparently yeah it's still a dead game i guess okay now i i guess you can argue if the content is really inadequate to be called as a version 2 yet well, let's just see what is going to happen in the rest of this year and next year probably that is just going to be the last chance for the most uh, gameplay oriented players but at the same time we are pretty lucky as a fantasy star online gamer as well because we can access like i don't know pso1 private servers psu private servers like for free and there is no intervention or dmca takedown that is run by sega so there's no issues here with the game that is being like currently still in a very weird situation i guess so you can still go back to those older games and just grind all you will but you know players who like fashion would just stay on new genesis that is just how it is you know because it's a very very free to play friendly game there's no other way for them to like monetize the game as much as possible other than fashion so yeah but since they are able to you know create so many fashion items consistently every week it does not mean that they cannot content they cannot create other contests as well so yeah take what that what do you feel anyways um just wait for the next content drop and enjoy the game casually and remember to always play other games and don't get burned out uh and yes yeah, just just be careful of like uh doing things that can break the tos by the way because that will result in the same thing so be careful guys so sayonara